For this DC motor example, we are simply verifying that we have the conditions that are needed. First is that you have G, add F G and add F square G to be linearly independent, which turned out to be a little bit complicated. I will really ask you to try to verify this numerically. Yeah. And um, then the second condition that we needed to verify was that the distribution formed out of G and add F G um, is uh, in fact involutive. Yeah. And that is pretty straightforward, turned out to be 0, 0, 0. So yeah, you have involutivity. Now, we have the, we have by Frobenius theorem that this is in fact completely integrable, right. So, so therefore, we have some output beta for which you have d beta multiplied by this terms of the distribution to be 0, okay. This is supposed to give you a partial differential equation. So, I am going to expand this. What's G? It's uh, I believe some one over L S. And what is F? Add F G. Is this guy? Minus K L R R. K L R X three. And K J X two. So this is 0, okay. So how do you find beta? Just write out the partial differential equations, okay. Uh, let us see, what am I going to get? The first one is going to give me 1 over ls del beta del x1 is 0, correct, right. This means what? What does this mean when you are trying to solve? Huh? Absolutely, implies beta equal to in a very, very bad notation, okay. Yeah, you should not write this like I mean in a paper and all, in an exam paper it is fine, <laughs> not in an article, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I am just saying beta is independent of x1, okay. What do I get from the second and third now? So you see that del b del x1 is already 0, right. So, when I expand this one, I do not have to worry about this term, right. So, I am going to simply write what? Uh, minus k l r x3 del beta del x2 plus k j x2 del beta del x3 equal to 0, okay. So, this is whatever the k goes away, right. So, I have some condition, right. How do I go forward now? You can guess, I guess. You can guess, yeah. What do you think? What do you think I should have beta? I will make this bigger if you do not see it well enough. What do you think you can get beta from here? See there is, it is very symmetric, right? There is x3 partial with respect to x2, x2 partial with respect to x3, okay? So, uh, so to me it seems like there should be, you know, x2 square plus x3 square, something like x2 square plus x3 square, yeah? Because if I have x2 square, it becomes a uh, twice x2, this gives me x2, x3. And if I have x3 square, I get twice x3, I get x2, x3 again, now this will cancel out, modulo some constants, right, yeah, makes sense, yeah, that is how I am guessing, yeah, it is a trick, that is all, I am not doing anything magical here, yeah, uh, but, but you can solve any way you want, I guess. Yeah, I, I do not know again what is an obvious way to solve otherwise, yeah. Um, 
typically how you do solve PDEs is you assume it to be you know some that the each in, the two variables appear independently and things like that. there are some methods of solving PDEs okay some only in some cases you can analytically solve them yeah but here I will guess so what is this by the way the, what is the scaling on x2 square and x3 square you think can somebody tell me huh? lr x2 square plus j x3 square perfect this will work why because it will give me you can put a half if you want but nobody cares this will give me uh, the first term will give me lr x2 twice lr x2 so lr lr goes away so this becomes x2 x3 this will give me j x3 2 j x3 so j j goes away so x2 x3 again so that becomes 0 that is a fair choice ok. So, again what did we end up doing what is this beta what was this beta what was all this work for output this is the output with respect to which the system is feedback linearizable. Now go back to what we had done we had taken the system fine the friction was missing no problem I mean there is this friction term that is missing from here that I think has zero impact on anything yeah it, this friction term is missing in the third dynamics not here no problem but the output was pre-specified to some x3 all right now what we are saying is that we are not going to pre-specify the output we are going to try we are not given an output we are going to try to find the best output under which the I get complete feedback linearizability okay and that is this guy lr x2 square plus j x3 square okay and now that we have you know this output uh, why don't we try okay try I am going to say h x is l r x 2 square plus j x 3 square okay what about h dot um, let me put a half if you do not mind yeah I will put a half just <laughs> yeah. what about h dot this is l r x 2 x 2 dot plus j x 3 x 3 dot huh? notice that x 2 dot and x 3 dot do not contain the control ok right. So, this is going to give me some big mess I am quite sure yeah I am not even going to write it sorry <laughs> I am not going to write it yeah uh, but I am going to compute h double dot yeah this is l r x 2 dot squared plus l r x 2 x 2 double dot plus j x 3 dot squared plus j x 3 x 3 double dot yeah yeah just product rule used yeah I, I do not want to write this mess so I am avoiding writing it yeah. <laughs> Now what do I know? I know that x2 dot square and x3 dot square are not bringing the control right because x2 dot is this, x3 dot is this does not have the control in it. But when I take the double derivative of x2 and in fact the double derivative of x3 I have to take derivatives of these guys right and here I have x1 dot appearing here I will have x1 dot appearing okay and that will give me the control okay so what did i end up finding that control appears okay so what is it relative degree is what did i do this correct by the way should the control be appearing here or in the third derivative? No, this is fine. Yeah. Sorry, I got all my coordinates. Yeah. I got all my coordinates, right? Or should I have no wait, 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 wait. I should be very careful. Huh? Did I get all my coordinates? Hmm. What would be my coordinates in this case? There will be h, h dot, and h double. No, a control should not appear here either. No, 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 no. 
will the control appear here? Oof. This competition is so painful that I am not very keen on doing it. What is the control term? Can anybody compute it? Here and here. Can somebody tell me what is the control term? Forget every other term. What will be this term? What will be the control term coming from this? L R X 2 and in X 2 double dot I have this guy right I will have so I am going to write it as minus K L S L R X 1 dot X 3 yeah that is the term that is containing the control is going to contain the control similarly if I look at this guy this is J X 3 x3 double dot will be k l s over j x1 dot x2 ok yeah this x1 dot is going to bring the control so I am just writing the terms in the control my feeling is these two terms are cancelling aren't they these two terms cancel out isn't it Yes, minus k l s x 1 dot x 2 x 3 k l s x 1 dot x 2 x 3 these terms cancel out right ok that is that is the right thing to happen ok. Now not going to write it but h third derivative has control. Okay, okay. It looked like this second derivative contains the control, but those terms will cancel each other out. So control doesn't appear. It can't because I need three coordinates, right? I started with a three-dimensional system. So my coordinates are now these three: h, h dot, and h double dot. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, as you can see, very very ugly looking. Yeah. Um, I, I well nothing much you can do yeah doesn't look very nice but nothing much you can do if you folks are enthused about it we can try the other example also do you want to try the other example or do you want to do it yourself hey, why don't you do it yourself then we'll make it an exercise yeah I mean we'll try actually we don't know so that was the other system which was what was the other system we were looking at we had this other example right this guy this is even worse. No, 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 no. We are not trying this. You can see that the g is not even a constant. No, no, no. Maybe something else. Yeah. So I, I mean, um, see. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, you can do. Uh, you know analytically you can work this out for very specific examples only yeah uh, but you can also see that you are uh, you know you are sort of uh, coming up with some rather unusual transformations okay which you would not never have guessed otherwise without looking at the structural details you will never have guessed that this sort of an output would give you complete feedback in energy. Right? We were working, we did work with some other, you know, y equal to x3 and some something arbitrary, right? Yeah. You would never have guessed that you would get feedback in energy. But yeah, with this very, very crazy looking coordinates, yeah, you will get a linear system in the end. Yeah. And this is not, like I said, this is not linearization or approximation of any kind. This is actually the system is linear in these coordinates. Yeah, it's it's almost like I think a lot of people say that if you if you if you squint your eye carefully enough, every nonlinear system is linear. Yeah, so if you look at it very carefully, every nonlinear system is linear. It's like you know, so that's basically the idea here. Yeah, um, so a lot of them do have this condition satisfied. As you can see, it's not easy to verify. Yeah. Uh, some of these I would still recommend that you verify numerically. 
yeah um, um, but for systems where you can do this analytically you have a pretty powerful result all right um, a lot of times it's not a scale issue or anything it's not like it's like n becomes large there is a computational issue it's not a computational issue it's just that for example if you have a thousand of the same kind of dynamical systems and you can sort of uh, by some suitable transformation you can make each of these dynamical system appear linear then you have now thousand linear systems that you are working with yeah so it's not going to affect you in terms of scale yeah if you have some you know robot dynamic like a mobile robot dynamics which is which you can feedback linearize yeah then you can say a lot of things right even if you have thousands of mobile robots you can still control them uh, with easier control loss seemingly easier loss yeah of course this non linear transformation will uh, sort of play a big role but the good thing is you have uh, it's just a transformation now it's just going from one function forward and one function backward yeah everything can be transformed like that so yeah i mean there is a little bit of a pinch of salt uh, associated with it and this is also i believe uh, yeah there is a little bit more on okay i mean there is just a little bit more on zero dynamics and so on uh, if you notice in the last slide of this uh, what i have done is i have looked at the rigid body dynamics yeah uh, and i mean although i have written it as an exercise uh, it it's almost like uh, i have done a little bit of the work myself you can or, or uh, probably the entire bit of work or actually at least a little bit of work i've done myself so please take a look at this exercise yeah there uh, this is the rigid body dynamics again yeah um in terms of some parameterization you've already seen the rigid body dynamics it's part of the current assignment also and uh, this is in some parameterization don't worry about what this row is but uh, what i've asked you to do is to see if it's you know full state feedback linearizable and find the change of coordinates yeah which is this lambda yeah so that's what i've sort of asked you to do and i have actually checked a little bit of the you know involutivity and things like that uh, i don't know if i actually found the coordinates doesn't look like it as of yet so yeah you can probably give that a shot yeah basically the idea is to find an output for which you have feedback full state feedback linearization yeah uh, actually i think i have hmm. this this so i would encourage you to look at this it, although it's like a solved exercise yeah but i would encourage you to look at this that uh, basically it, it's i have not used the uh, integrability condition here because it life becomes very hard with that condition i have simply guessed that y equal to rho if i take my output as rho itself that's a uh, that's going to make give me complete feedback generation because uh, the second derivative will contain the control yeah so i have sort of guessed at it again instead of actually going by the integrability condition that you have yeah but this also works so a lot of there is a lot of literature in spacecraft uh, community where they use uh, you know this this instead of using the rotation and the angular velocity as variables they take the rotation and its second derivative as, as, as sorry and its first derivative as the variables yeah because in those variables you can claim some kind of linear system yeah uh, though this is little bit more complicated than that yeah uh, anyway maybe we'll we'll give you some simulations based on this all right 